Well, he was down here. They had purchased this site, several hundred acres. He focused, my grandfather focused on the steps of the process, and he took a step back within each step of the process. How could he influence the taste in a very specific way, which was softer yet full flavor and balance, front of the palate, none of that bite, none of that bitterness, none of that test of manhood aggressiveness that you had traditionally with American whiskey. And that was, that was always his, his focus, his passion. They, were, they began to operate. In this room is a picture over there on the wall of those very first employees distilling here on site uh, the, the liquid that would eventually become Maker's Mark. And the bourbon's made today the way it has always only ever been made. But as they were operating, month after month, year after year, I, mar I marvel at the fact that, you know, they operated this facility and this brand, this operation, for almost six years with no revenue. Well, three or four years into uh, those barrels aging over time, I think in the back of his mind, he just assumed his new handmade bourbon, refined, good-tasting bourbon, would celebrate the family, Samuels which is what most distillers had always done, name their whiskey after their family. And she challenged him. She, she thought that if his new handmade bourbon were named after the family, consumers or customers would be confused with his new handmade, good-tasting bourbon in that rough test of manhood whiskey that we had made for a century. And her vision was to create a name and design a bottle that would reflect the values, the essence, of his handmade, good-tasting bourbon. At the time, she had one of the more extensive collections of English pewter in the world. And she had noticed the craftsmen and women who produced the handmade pewter would always make their mark on those pieces they were most proud of as special, as handmade. She suggested he had gone to greater lengths than any distiller in the world to produce a handmade whiskey and he should make his mark. So the mark of the maker, the maker's mark, is blown into the glass and is on every label, celebrating Samuel's family name, uh, Roman numeral four. He was registered as fourth generation distiller of our family, Samuel's, here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. There were two additional generations that made whiskey illegally, and she didn't count them. And then the stars celebrate Star Hill Farm, which is what Robert Samuels, my namesake, had named the land-grant farm when he first settled in Bourbon County, Virginia, before Kentucky existed. He settled in 1784 on a land grant, fleeing from Cumberland County, Pennsylvania, after the Whiskey Rebellion. So that's the name. She had decided to spell the word whiskey on the label without an E, having celebrated our family's Scotch history ties uh, to Samuel Scotland where we had distilled from grain as far back as the 1500s. Every label since the very beginning has been printed and torn by hand and it was her suggestion. What better way to finish off the handmade process than to seal each and every bottle by hand in red sealing wax. And she thought that way since each bottle would be sealed unique different and special by hand, uh, that that would be the ultimate way to define the handmade whiskey that her husband, my grandfather, had created. So as here at Maker's Mark, we have the most inefficient bottling line in our industry. And to me, that summarizes, that summarizes what this brand stands for. The Wall Street Journal talked about Maker's Mark, quirky little distillery, in Marion County, Kentucky that goes against the grain to make bourbon with good taste. They said bourbon distiller is a model of inefficiency by choice. His goal when he settled here and purchased this site with his vision, his vision was not to make the most efficient whiskey almost 180 degrees from that, irrespective of cost, as a craftsman, make a handmade bourbon uh, that would celebrate uh, a very unique taste profile.